This video is part of a series of videos recorded for the Paget Awareness Day on the 11th of January 2021. I'm Dr. Anna Dorszewska, consultant and senior lecturer in Liverpool, and I have an interest in Paget's disease of bone. In this short video, I'm hoping to explain what Paget's disease is and also outline the best treatment. Before we discuss Paget's disease, I'd like to first give you some background on normal healthy bone. The bone has many functions. It supports the body, it aids movement, protects vital organs such as the lungs and the heart. It contains the bone marrow where blood cells are made and it's also the main store and regulator of minerals. And in order to be able to perform these diverse functions, bone has to be dynamic and adaptable. So for example, weight bearing exercises promote bone formation and bone gain. However, lack of gravity or mechanical loading induces bone loss. So how is this possible? This all boils down to the function of two bone cells or types of bone cells. The osteoclasts seen here on the left, there is an osteoclast depicted in red, which resorbs bone and osteoblasts. An osteoblast makes bone or forms bone. And the action of those two types of cells is balanced in healthy bone. So the amount of resolved bone equals the amount of bone formed. And that allows for bone repair. So healthy bone can undergo some wear and tear and the damaged bone will be removed by osteoclasts and then replaced by osteoblasts. The newly formed bone seen here in green is not mineralized and it will undergo mineralization um, in due course and everything returns to normal. So we talk about healthy bone turnover or bone remodeling. And this bone remodeling allows for the renewal of the tissue. So if we look at a skeleton, um, our skeletons undergo renewal all the time. And the, this takes place in the remodeling fossa, which are depicted here by those pink circles. So after 10 years, uh, this process allows us to renew our skeletons completely and get a completely new skeleton. So what is Paget's disease of bone? Paget's disease has been named after Sir James Paget, who uh, was an eminent Victorian physician and surgeon. And uh, in 1876, he described this condition. This is after he had encountered a 46 year old gentleman who uh, came from the north of England and presented to him with aches and pains in his bones. And over the years, he developed uh, long bone deformities, such as seen here, this bowing of his shin bone, um, as indicated by this red arrow. And his skull has also enlarged such that he had to increase the size of his head. And because the uh, bone deformities were associated with pain and warmth, um, Sir James Paget felt that this condition um, uh, um, signifies inflammation of bones. So he described, he described it as a form of chronic bone inflammation. And this is a photograph of his first patient and you can appreciate the significant long bone deformities. However, nowadays we know that in fact Paget's disease is due to focally increased and disorganized bone remodeling. So if we look again at our skeleton, which is undergoing bone remodeling and renewal, and now focus our attention on the right shin, we'll see that in Paget's disease, this remodeling process gets out of control and those fossa become bigger and they can progress down the shaft of the long bone with a rate estimated 
uh, of about one centimeter a year. And that can cause significant pain and deformity and other problems. So if we look again at the cells um, that um, allow for bone remodeling, in Paget's disease, the osteoclasts are highly abnormal. They are enlarged and they come in large numbers uh, to uh, resolve bone. And it comes as no surprise that osteoblasts that then uh, want to lay new bone also do it in a haphazard way, such that the newly formed bone is abnormal, it's depicted here in red, and it's much weaker. And this can cause swelling and de bone deformity, and a lot of pain, of course. And the other point is that this remodeling uh, keeps um, uh, going unchecked, uh, so it is an ongoing process. Um, and we can appreciate um, the problem more when we look at x-rays. So this is an individual with Paget's disease of the right tibia, as indicated here, uh, which is significantly enlarged uh, and deformed as compared to the left one, unaffected. So in a nutshell, Paget's disease is um, due to focal increased bone turnover, which is driven by abnormal osteoclasts. We can also see them here in real life. This is a tissue, a biopsy taken from a patient with Paget's disease, and these are the osteoclasts uh, as indicated by those blue arrows. And they dig into the bone, which is seen here in pink. Uh, Paget's disease is associated with genetic mutations, most commonly of the gene uh, uh, called sequestrum 1 or p62 and these mutations um, activate osteoclasts. It favors the axial and weight-bearing bones, so on an isotope bone scan um, we can see uh, increased uptake in those black hot areas in the vertebrae, some of the vertebrae in the pelvis and the weight-bearing bones, the femur um, on the right and a part of the left femur as well. This patient also has um, skull involvement and uh, right shoulder blade involvement. Um, Paget's disease is more common after the age of 55 and it is uh, slightly more frequent in men than in women um, and its prevalence increases with aging. And historically, Lancashire has been a hotspot for Paget's disease. This slide depicts some complications of Paget's disease. So we've already uh, spoken about deformities. The deformities can cause secondary osteoarthritis, as seen here in this ankle joint of narrowing of the joint. And uh, pagetic bones can fracture more easily. So this is a femoral bone with a pathological fracture. This uh, femoral bone is affected by Paget's disease. If Paget's disease affects the skull, then it can cause decreased hearing acuity or deafness. And there is some evidence to indicate that uh, Beethoven may have suffered from Paget's disease which caused uh, his deafness at an early age. Now we'll uh, quickly move on to the diagnosis of Paget's disease. Isolated elevation of alkaline phosphatase, which is an enzyme produced by osteoblasts, can be easily detected in a blood test and that can indicate uh, active Paget's disease. Um, an X-ray can also detect pagetic bones and an isotope bone scan, as already mentioned, will tell us about the activity um, of Paget's disease. In clinical practice, all three tests are usually performed to diagnose and also to assess the activity and extent of Paget's disease. So what is the treatment for Paget's disease? Thanks to the pioneering work of Professor Graham Russell and his colleagues about uh, 50 years ago, we now have uh, fantastic drugs to uh, treat Paget's disease. These are known as bisphosphonates and the gold standard is dolodronic acid, which is given in an infusion. Resedronate, uh, given in tablets, can also be used uh, in patients who can't receive dolodronic acid. 
So what do they do? What do the bisphosphonates do? So if you look again at our um, affected bone with Paget's disease, uh, with a lot of osteoclasts, busily resolving bone, um, what bisphosphonates do, they actually wipe out the osteoclasts. And you'll also note that uh, they, uh, by doing so, they also uh, uh, leave a residue uh, on top of the remodeling bone. And this residue is important because it poisons any other osteoclasts which might want to come along and resolve bone. And secondly, they allow for normal healthy bone formation. This has been proven on biopsies. However, what they can't do is uh, reverse the deformity which uh, may have already formed. Zaludronic acid significantly improves alkaline phosphatase um, and also uh, the quality of life in uh, Paget's disease. And I'll show you the effect of zaludronic acid on alkaline phosphatase here as compared to resedronate. So this graph is taken from um, a paper by Ian Reid and, uh, and his group uh, published nearly 10 years ago. What we see here is uh, the level of alkaline phosphatase in Paget's disease, active Paget's disease, before uh, the treatment um, and after the treatment. So one group of patients received zoledronic acid in one infusion, and another group of patients received resedronate uh, in tablet form, 30 milligrams a day for two months, which is a standard uh, regime for treatment of active Paget's disease. And we can immediately see that both drugs lower alkaline phosphatase. However, um, zoledronate is more powerful as it normalizes, not only normalizes alkaline phosphatase, but it um, allows for uh, uh, this normal alkaline phosphatase to persist for a number of years, at least six years. So this is indicated by this green area, the alkaline phosphatase after zoledronate. Uh, this dashed arrow, show, uh, this dashed line uh, uh, shows uh, the effect of zoledronic acid as opposed to resedronate, which is not as powerful. And uh, we can also appreciate uh, the effect of zoledronic acid on isotope bone scans. So here we have a patient who has um, active Paget's disease in the distal femur, very close to the knee joint. Uh, and after zoledronic acid, uh, in fact, six and a half years after zoledronic acid, um, the, the effect of the drug is still significant. So there's hardly any activity seen here in this distal femur. And not only uh, is there no activity, but also um, the disease has not progressed, which is very important. So in summary, Paget's disease of bone is a focal disorder of bone remodeling. It can cause many complications. Uh, however, we do have uh, excellent treatment for Paget's disease, um, and this is zoledronic acid, which is very effective. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>